on the horizontal axis, we are going to put our classes. You use either the midpoints or the boundaries. It's your choice, by the way. You don't have, unless they specify which one you're going to use. It doesn't matter. You can use the midpoints or the class boundaries. On the vertical is going to go your frequency or your relative frequency. So let's try this. We're going to use either class midpoints or boundaries. I'll show you both cases and show you that it really doesn't make that much of a difference what you use. Uh, some people can choose to leave a little gap here. I don't. I just make it, if this were a straight line, I'd make it uh, right against this vertical axis here. So we look at our first class. What we're going to do is make up, how many classes do we have again? Eight. Our eight bars. They have to be equidistant. So, for instance, if I want to make this one that far apart, I can't make the next one like that. That would just look silly. So we're going to use the same spacing all the way through. So we have our eight. We're going to have our eight bars here. Here's the difference between the class midpoints and the class boundaries. Do you guys have the midpoints still on your papers? Mm -hmm. If not, go back to them here. Can you tell me all my class midpoints? The first class midpoint. Here's how you'd use your, you know, let me show you your boundaries first and then I'll show you midpoints. Show me your, because you said the 19.5, right? Let's do the boundaries first. Uh, the first class boundary was 19.5. Here's how you would show your class boundaries. You do 19.5 here. What's the next class boundary? Wasn't it 17.5? No, the first one? Good call. Oh, you said the midpoint, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and I said midpoint first yeah. and then I asked for boundaries. See, I screwed you everyone up. My bad. 17.5. Thanks for that correction. What's the next class boundary? How about the next one? And these should be on your paper, I just have to erase them. And 49.5 is the last one. Then we go back to our data and we find out for each class how many people were there. So can you tell me how many people were between 17.5 and 21.5? As it relates to our class, that's just talking about this class right here. It's a little bit of overlap, but not much. Uh, we just need those that 0.5 to make sure that our, our gap, there's no gaps between our, our bars there. So how many people are we talking about here? How many? So 25 people are between these ages. This relates to our first class. So we're going to have a bar that looks like this. And we just keep on going. How much should our next class be? So we'll drop all the way down here. Looks like the next class was four, so we're going to drop down to four. Do that. Then we had two. We had one. We had zero, so we're not going to put anything there. There's there's no bar there. We're going to go back up to one. If you 
followed that, nod your head. See if, see if I still have you with me here. So we're just putting this one in a picture. Same information in there. Same exact information. We are using boundaries instead of upper and lower class limits because otherwise we'd have a gap here. If we want to show that we're not missing any people, that's why we don't have any gaps. So if you're a person between these ages, you were counted. Yeah, no, no missing pieces here. Yes? Does it show the data a little bit better for the common person? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Instead of looking at the numbers, you go, oh, wow. Most of the people are here, aren't they? You go, yeah. We have a, a strong drop-off. Strong drop-off. Do you see how it doesn't fit the normal curve? A normal curve would have, look at, look at the board, everybody. Okay, some of you are, are looking, look up here. A normal curve would do this. It'd have little bars, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Biggest bars in the middle. Then it would go back down to the little bars. That's how normal would look. A normal curve would be this superimposed on that. This is definitely not normal. This curve goes like that. Let me get the, let me get the sound effect right. right. This one would go. That's how normal sounds. See? It's pretty. It's prettier. This is not that pretty. Just fizzles out. So that is our, that's our histogram. That's the most basic histogram. It has to do with our frequencies. Can you change it to include midpoints instead of boundaries? Yes, and it's so easy. You don't change anything. All you do is, you ready for it? Erase this. For, to me, I like the midpoints better. It looks cleaner. You put the midpoints. You're using the number that represents your, your data class the best. So here you would use, what was our first midpoint? Can you tell me? Okay. And then you'd have the 23.5, and so on and so on and so on. So you'd have 27.5. Am I getting them right so far? The next one should be 35.5. So you can use class midpoints to make up your, your Instagram as well. Either one, it really doesn't matter. What if we were to make a relative frequency? This is a basic frequency distribution, standard frequency distribution. If we were to make a relative frequency distribution, the graph wouldn't change, but this information would change from frequencies to relative frequencies. So you'd say, oh, okay, this was 58%. So maybe you'd say like, oh, This would be like 60%. And then you go down from there. You say this would be like, let's see how much is that? 50%. So 50%. 40%. 30%. Everything would look identical. That's about right, right? Everything would look exactly the same. Only here you wouldn't have frequencies anymore, you would have relative frequencies. You just have percentages. Looks the same, doesn't it? Just has those percentages off to the left-hand side. Notice how the information didn't change. It's still the same information, it's just how you represent it on your graph. Still okay with me? Okay. The last thing that we can do in the last minute is you can make up a cumulative frequency distribution. And that is just this information put on that graph. So I'll change it one last time. The graph will change in this case. information over there. So for our first class, we'll use the midpoint still. We start with how many people? Okay. So we have 25 right off the bat. Can someone out there tell me the next bar that I'm going to make? Am I going to go back down to 10 if I'm making a cumulative frequency distribution? 35. I'm now plotting these numbers over here doing these bars, because we're, we're doing a cumulative frequency distribution. So we go, next up we go to 35. Next one would be what? 
much higher. Then we have the 42. Then 42 again, I think, right? Yeah. Then 43. And 43. Oops. Why people do this one is so you can see where most of the growth is. Uh, because notice how it really, really plateaus over on the side of it. It says after this part was serious growth, it was as far as our, our ages here, and then nothing. We really didn't have that many people over here. That's you can see that with the cumulative frequency distribution uh, as represented on the histogram. So at this point, do you feel okay? I'm making up all these things. You can do a frequency distribution, you can do relative frequency distribution, cumulative, you can represent it on a graph, how many people understood everything we talked about today. Good deal, all right.